Hey everyone, I'm Colin Weston with the Mod Golf Podcast. So today I am joined with Marcus Westerberg, who is the co-founder of DeWiz. What is DeWiz, you ask? Well, I got one of their units on right here. So this has the, the stimuli, the feedback to improve your swing here, which we talked about on the podcast, on our long form audio podcast with Marcus, but we're gonna talk about some other things and he's even gonna give us a little demo here since you can actually see me. But before we do that, the first we're gonna do is we're gonna get him on screen. There he is. Hey, Marcus, welcome back to the Model hey. Podcast. Thank you, great to be here. Absolutely. So, hey, before we get started, why don't you let our uh, our viewers know what what I'm wearing here, what's, uh, and, and, the, uh, and the app for the feedback that's going along with it. So what, what, what do we have here? So the reason we created the Wiz was to help golfers improve faster. And the thing you have in your wrist is called the Wiz, and it's connected to an app. So this is a wearable tech connected to an app, and it tracks your golf swing in real time and gives you a lot of interesting data. It also can give you feedback in real time through these stimuli plates on the underside of the whiz. And why do we do that? Yes, it's because it tap into the brain to help the brain understand what you should and shouldn't do because we give that feedback immediately as you break a preset threshold. Let's say you want to make your backswing longer. So you set the limit on here, but you want to go here. Let's say that's 50 inches and you want to go 55 to hit the ball farther. If you don't swing longer than 50 inches, you're going to get the feedback and your brain's going to know, okay, that was too short. I need to go here. And that's how we help golfers improve faster. Got it. Got it. So, hey, we're going to we're just, we're freestyling it here. We decided, hey, let's do a little demo because you just mentioned off camera that I don't need a club in order to, for the whiz to then give some biofeedback on my swing. So, hey, should we give it a shot? What do you think? Yes, you're going to get data without the golf club. It's not going to be exactly the same as with the golf club, of course, but it's very interesting and valuable swing practice. And if you have five minutes in your office, you can do it without a club. All right. Well, hey, I'm in my office. I have five minutes. So and I've got this and I've got this. So walk us through here. What's the first thing I need to do on, on the app here? Do I need to go get started or discovery or challenge practice and learn? What should I do? So let's go into discovery and just what you're going to do. Click discovery. Okay. And uh, then I want you to set up and wait for the tone, which is the ready to swing tone. Let's also go screen on the, on the, uh, the whiz and in the app, which means that the whiz is ready to record. It takes like three tenths of a second. You set okay. up. So I got this on the screen now, but. I... Yeah, just put the phone down and you set up, wait for the tone and make a swing. So we're gonna look at some, some data. All right. Go into your golf setup. Just give it set a swing. Now wait for the tone. There you go, started. swing, swing. Transition plus six centimeters. So now your voice feedback was set to transition, which is a comparison between the backswing plane and the start of the downswing. And you said it was plus uh, six centimeters. You're going in centimeters here, which is easy for me. Yes. And that means you're, you were just slightly over the top. Right. And then if you just pull up uh, where it says swing data on the phone, just pull up there and we're going to look at the data sheet. Swing data. Just pull up on the screen, pull up. Oh, there we go. Scroll up, I don't know what it's called. And then you get the data sheet. There we go. So it's got my, oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I see it now. Yeah, so that's the data sheet, and this is what we're looking at. This is these are your numbers. Now, of course, you don't have a golf club, you don't have a golf ball, but but, but what we see here is, of course, the transition number. We have five different tempo numbers. The first one you can see there is the ratio, which is basically the rhythm of the golf swing. And in full swings, we want to see that rhythm be three to one. Now, again, you don't have a golf club, so your rhythm is two to one, and the rhythm is the backswing time divided by your downswing time. Right. And of course we heard about the tour tempo before, which is three to one, where you can see the better players. And this is from all data we have. Better players are at three to one. I'm talking about world-class players, three to one or slightly lower. Whereas we look at the club golfer who might be four to one. And what does right. that? It means the backswing is really slow and the downswing is fast and jerky. Right, right. Which makes it come, which makes it difficult to time that impact and hit the good shots. And then of course, we'll look at other tempo numbers such as uh, the time from start to impact, which is really interesting when you're looking at 
at speed because the club golfer is about 1.3, 1.4 seconds from start to impact and take a guy like Bryson DeChambeau who hits the ball a long way. He is at 0.8 seconds with his driver. Well, right. that's interesting. Wow. I'll try that out there and you will see how difficult that is, especially when you combine, the, combine it with the next uh, data point, which is the length of the backswing. We actually give you a number on how long your backswing was in inches or centimeters. And Bryson is 80 plus inches length of backswing, where the normal club golfer is around 55 inches. Wow. And again, put those two together, 55 inches length of backswing with the driver in 1.3 seconds compared to 80 plus inches in 0.8 seconds. And then you see how he's able to hit the ball so far. Great. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure on here, my, my backswing was uh, not uh, 80 inches, not even, probably not even 55. And that's one place that I find I struggle. And it is, is between the, the hip turn that then of course amplifies with a shoulder turn and also lengthening the width of, of my backswing uh, and then all those things add up. So with this, getting the, kind of the visual on there is really helpful. So let's talk about the next piece here. How do I then activate the, uh, the vibration for the stimuli there? So you go into the app and the settings and the bottom uh, right. Okay. Uh, the, the, the classical uh, cog wheel icon. I see it. Okay. I've got, got that, the got this the up learning. now. Okay. Yeah. At the top, you see the learning stimuli. I'll toggle that on. Yeah. Right. So I need to turn that on. And right now it says it's... Uh, I'm enabling the learning stimuli with level two. We, we okay, joked about that. this on the uh, on the podcast recording before. The, the first time I tried it was on the ghost from one to seven. I tried it on seven and I thought my, my, my body was going to explode. So yes, two is good. So I'm going to, here you can see, I'm going to enable stimuli here. Done. Okay. And we have to say that now you've tested because what we usually do the first time you do this, you test and you start with level one and you work yourself gradually upwards to a level uh, that should be a slight discomfort. We also have a, a learning stimuli guide that will take you through this and find your light level because what you do then is you just uh, press the button on the device and then you will feel what it feels like when you test the level. Did you, did you turn it on? You have to turn to, in the app. You have to, to uh, set the level first. Have you done that? Okay. It's still trying to calibrate the device again. No, because that's because you turned the device off. Oh, geez. Oopsies. So just keep it uh, still and it's going to calibrate. So that's a good thing we can talk about that when you place the WIS on a stable surface, it calibrates in, in about a second. So what you do when you start, you just place the WIS on a stable surface. You press the button. There's only one button on the WIS. And it calibrates. Now okay. you're holding it in the air, so it's gonna. Is it green yet? It did. Yeah, it turned green. So, so how do I do the test it. then for good. the uh, the level then, of the, the stimuli? So let, let me show you. We go into the app here. And uh, okay, I'm. I have to turn my Bluetooth off because I want to uh, use it. The... So we are. You, you have enabled the stimuli. Yes. And then you go set learning stimuli level. You come right. to this. And then you say set level manually. So and set level manually and yes. So you press test the level and then you press the button quickly on the wrist. Just press it once. Oh, and now okay. you're gonna feel it. <laughs> that still so made me jump a little it. bit, that's fine. Good, because what we, what we see here is that when you test a level like that sitting still, you probably need one more when you're hitting balls because you're going to be focused on the balls and you're going to feel it less. So what would we say? One level more higher when you're, when you're swinging than when you're testing it. Okay. All right. So if I go back now, now that I've got the learning stimuli turned on and then go I need back to go into practice and learn practice and learn. Yep. And uh, let's go back to uh, the bottom of the app. You have a graph. Yes. At the very bottom that. of that, click the graph. That's history swings. Let's go into that old swing you just made. And I want to see how long your backswing was. I got to let you get how long do you think it was? Here, we'll have a little little contest here. Oh, it was about 50 inches. Well, you're using the centimeters it's right now. It's in centimeters so right now. It was now. about 125. Oh, it was 
135. 135. Okay, not bad. So let's say you wanna you wanna make that backswing longer to go more Bryson style drives. Uh, so you go into practice and learn. You go back to that swinging guy at the bottom of the. Uh, Got it. Yeah, I'm in there now. Practice yeah. and learn, and scroll to your right or left to find length of backswing. Practice your tempo. Practice your. There we go. Length of backswing. Now at up there you can see practice goals. It says 120, 160 centimeters. Yes. Click there. Practice goals. Right. And okay, now you're gonna. So I've got the range that I want to have. To have then. Yeah. So now you want to turn off maximum distance. Turn off maximum. Turn distance. off. And now we're gonna set the minimum distance to longer than you just swung. So let's set the minimum distance to 140 centimeters because we want to make your backswing longer now. Okay, I've done that as we can, whoop, Good. there we go. We can so see just that. click out of that, click the X out of that. Okay. And now just click click on the, on the swinging guy on the screen and, and you're ready to get going. So practice and learn again. So once again, for my ne to hit my next swing, what what do I what do I do from here? Uh, you go. You you should stay in in um, length of backswing. So scroll sideways to length in of length backswing. of backswing. Okay, there we go. All you have to do is click on that that swinging guy, that icon. But just click on the screen. It's going to start. There we go. Got it. Okay, I'm back here. So good. So now you just put the phone down, set up, wait for the tone, and make a swing. If you go longer than 140 centimeters, you will not feel the learning stimuli. If you go shorter, you will. All right. So I have to wait for set it up. to... Set, no, no, set up. Set up in the golf posture. Right. There you go. And just wait for the tone. There you go. There and go. just swing. Okay. Tone and swing. There we go. Backswing 160 centimeters. So you're well above your 140 threshold. Now I want you to try to do it two short swings so you can feel the learning stimuli. Okay. Because I didn't feel anything there, yes. No, you shouldn't because you you exceeded the 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 you you passed the test or there we go. Good for me. <laughs> okay. So I go back uh you just keep going. It's it's already set. All right, of course. Yeah, yeah. So set up and make a short swing. Okay. Ah, short swing now. Oh, I felt that. Yeah. So that was 119. As, as soon as you change directions at 119, you're supposed to go 140. You yes. say change directions at 119. You're going to feel that learning stimuli immediately. You don't wait for the tone. Oh, sorry. There you go. 115. I definitely felt that. Yeah. And you see, you feel the impulse right here when you make that swing mistake, which is what we're, yeah, that's, that's the whole idea to help your brain understand what to do, not to do. See there. Yeah, yeah, and that's the avatar you can see, and you can rotate the avatar any way you want. Look at the data. Yeah, and the lines that you see in the avatar there are how you have swung the, the whiz, which is basically your hand path, how that's been swung. And uh, the avatar will swing in your actual tempo and uh, pretty much the actual length of backswing you have made too. Stuff. Well, we didn't set this up to actually have an impromptu lesson here, but we, we just did. So, uh... This yeah. thing, awesome. This is the, the beauty of yeah. visuals here uh, in, in video. So love it. There we go. Can't wait to do that with a golf club in my hand there. I'll take that out to the range later on today and, and practice it uh, even more. So, hey, we just did a little demo there on the podcast, on the audio podcast. We talked about your entrepreneurial journey, the aha moment, your team, all that good stuff. So Perhaps you can just leave us here, uh, once again, with expanding on your own entrepreneurial journey. Any any advice you can give for people out there, whether it's the golf industry or any other industry, and they're looking at entrepreneurship or they've got an idea for a product uh, or or a service, what what advice can you give them to 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 start? What encouragement and advice can you give people out there that are that uh, have an idea but maybe they don't have the uh, the courage to to take that first step, or perhaps they don't even know what the first step is? Yeah, I always said that when you have an idea, keep it to yourself. Almost, be careful with whom you talk. Not that your idea can be stolen; it can, yes. And we've been very uh, meticulous with, with the NDAs and everything and the process of the WIS, but it's very easy to get discouraged in the, in the early stages of the journey. And when you tell someone about your idea and big plans that you have, 
sometimes you scare people and they try to discourage you. So, so keep it to yourself and be careful with whom you, you talk about your idea to. But then, of course, you need to bring in other people to help you refine your idea and, and make that better and make that hopefully into a product or, or, or a, a company. So, so uh, but after that, those stages, it's, it's a lot about grit and, and, and listen. You have one mouth and two ears. So, so listen, and you will learn a lot. Uh, and, and, and like I said on the podcast, uh, when you come to building a team, the team is invaluable, and, and uh, we are very happy to, to be able to, uh, to have a good team and to not be uh, ego-driven and say that we have done everything with ourselves because we can't. We're not that good. I don't think anyone is. Uh, no one beats a team. Uh, and like we say, there's no I in team. Yeah, it uh, sounds like a cliche, but it is so true. And I, I can tell from just talking to you, not only this time, but previous conversations, you certainly embrace that and it's part of who you are. You don't manufacture that. It, it is authentic and it's, I, I can just sense that. So hey, as we finish up here, once again, I do encourage our, uh, our viewers here, everybody out there to, uh, so down below, we have left the link for the audio podcast uh, episode that Marcus and I recorded a little bit earlier all kinds of great stuff there different conversation uh, love that but as we finish up here Marcus why don't you let our viewers know where they can learn more about DeWiz yeah we're on all kinds of social media like YouTube Twitter Instagram Facebook on um, DeWiz Golf and our website is DeWizGolf.com excellent Simple like that. So once again, down below, we will include uh, the links to all that. And hey, if you enjoyed this conversation and my uh, impromptu lesson with uh, DeWiz here with Marcus, if you if you did enjoy this, hey, please consider subscribing to the Mod Golf YouTube channel. Hey, give us a like here and comment. We want to make this engaging and interactive. You got any questions for Marcus? Hey, uh, I'll also include his email address down below. But hey, leave a comment there and we will get back to you. So hey, Marcus Westerberg, again. Great conversation, and uh, hey, look forward to meeting you in person, and uh, look forward to uh, using DeWiz more and getting my swing more uh, inside out, improving that tempo, and uh, all those good things to get my 17 handicap down to uh, maybe, do I, dare I dream as a single digit? Do you think maybe, uh, what do you think? You think there's a chance for me? Absolutely. Let's stream single digits. It's a great goal. There we go. Love it. I mean, I should have gone like this. There we go. All right. Good to see you again. Hey, Marcus, we'll talk soon. All right. You take care. Take care. Thanks so much.